Hey everybody, Margaret here. I am flying solo today. Bethany is not here with me today, but I have an important topic for you and this is gonna require a little soul searching. Are you ready? So my question for you is, are you still mopping the floors in your own business instead of doing the things that you know would bring you in the most money? Now, I'm a week out from my Ignite Your Power event that's right here in Natick and we're really, dialing in our schedule and there's so much of a theme through the whole three days of transformational work in the marketing work work that is about you stepping into your power and owning your value in a way that feels good that feels natural that feels non-dominating but actually um, empowering to everyone around you which so many of us women don't have or have ever seen a pathway to do own your power in a way that is empowering and graceful and beautiful. So I am going to read to you a um, an excerpt here from a book called Know Your Value. And there is a woman being interviewed in this section who has been multiple times on the new on the um, Times list of most influential people in the world. She was a professor at um, University of Houston and at Harvard. And I want to read you this excerpt that she talks about in her career, earlier in career, about um, basically doing the hard mop the floor jobs that no one else would do and the difference between men and women, because I think this is going to apply to you in your business. So um, when she was a dean of uh, University of Houston, she had to assign the professors, both male and females, they needed to fill the schedule of all the classes required. And some of them were at inconvenient times early in the morning or late in the day. And what she stunningly noticed was that all of the men emailed her back and said, that time is inconvenient for me, no. And all of the women professors sort of sucked it up and said, okay, I'll take that heavy shift. And she thought about her own life where she said, you know, never occurred to her just to push back and say, that's not convenient for me. And she said, it never crossed my mind to say no, then this is why, okay? And I want you to think about your previous career before you came into marketing yourself in your own business. She says, partly I felt lucky to be there. Um, I'm a cooperator, a let's get the job done kind of person. Somebody needs to do it. Someone needs to mop the floor. So, okay, give me the mop. Um, and I see this as a difference of putting ourselves, if not first, at least equivalent value on ourselves that we don't see our worth. That this is how we can be helpful to the team. Um, we see how we can add without stopping to like, let's pull together. I'm going to be helpful on the team without stopping to say, wait a minute, is this a valuable contribution that I'm making and what am I getting in return for this? Um, and she says, it never even crossed my mind until later when I'm committed to doing something, I'll look around and realize and go, why are the three people in the room who are doing the hard, invisible labor to get this done always the women? And so she talks about how sometimes low profile jobs are, are necessary and important. Sometimes when we start out in our new careers, we might um, work for free with private clients to get experience, to get testimonials, to get training. But she's saying that you've got to remember that that invisible work, that hard time that you put in doesn't necessarily get the accolades or money or promotion. And what men do is in general, never pick up the mop. Right. So she's saying and when she was at faculty meetings and they were looking at hire someone, they would they would be talking about a man and say he has this accomplishment, this accomplishment, this accomplishment. And it really didn't factor in if every woman in the room knew that this person was a pain, that this person wouldn't cooperate, that this person was known as a non team player. It was all about those things are irrelevant. This person's accomplishment will move our institution forward. Right. But what women tend to do without question, without pushback is all she calls it the crap stuff, the stuff that nobody cares about, the stuff that nobody values, the stuff that nobody notices. And how many times we have been willing to be team players. And of course, 
that's a wonderful gift that we have. But when you come into your own career and now you are saying, this is my time, this is my passion. This is the work that I want to do for me. I'm leaving my old job behind. You have to be super conscious about the tendency in you to do that kind of invisible, low value labor that nobody else is really going to do that people will tend to um, be skip over you or see you as invisible or see you as the person who gives freebies when you are not out there proclaiming your value. And so I really want you to check in around this in your life. So many women that we coach, Bethany and I coach in, in over the past decade, will say, well, Margaret, now I'm in this new career and I don't have the experience yet. And they're forgetting that in their entire past career, they had achievement after achievement, after credibility, after authority. And they're saying to us, well, that doesn't really count because now I'm trying to do this completely other thing. You know, now I am a Reiki master. Now I am a, a marketing coach. Now I am a naturopath. And I had a completely different career before. And they're forgetting about how accomplishment and authority are part of their value, even when we're doing something new, that suddenly we're starting at the bottom. And as I've said so many times, we're trying to prove ourselves instead of just be ourselves. Even when you're learning something new, you are no longer proving yourself at this time of your life. You're building on that value. Now, I've so far talked about the value that we that we have to remember and own and honor and the things that we've accomplished in our life. But the number one place that really gets to us for as women in our value is the inside job around our value is the whole lifetime of doing the invisible hard labor, picking up the mop and going, well, somebody's got a mop the floor that nobody values, no one appreciates. And that gets wired into us as a reinforced unconscious model that says we're just what we do is not as valuable is not as important important and at the same time we have so much programming that says if I were to do what Margaret's saying and actually toot my own horn god forbid toot my own horn it's like the sin of all sins and talk about myself in glowing terms and own my value and charge my worth and just sit there with it. This is how much I charge. If you don't see the value, then you don't have to pay me. But this is what I charge. If I were to do that, inside of me would just collapse. I would feel anxious. I would feel guilty. I would feel ashamed. I would feel, but what if I fail? What if people challenge me? And that's one of the big focuses at Ignite. That's one of the big focus that should be in all of your personal growth work is what inside of you agrees with this programming? What inside of you has been programmed in there that made it in our generation? You know, if you're in your 50s or 60s, in our generation, that these things were just reality, right? These things were just how it is. I'm mopping the floor while the men in, in my uh group or my team or my company are standing on their accomplishments and really getting those accolades, really getting seen as the contributor, as the valuable one. How has that been internalized by me as something that just says, this is just the way the world is. And if I try to step out of that, I'm actually, I don't need anybody to say, hey, you're stepping out of line. Inside of me, I will feel self-doubt. So what does self-doubt do for us? What does self-doubt do for us? It actually says you're stepping out of line. When you feel that self-doubt kick up and you start to say, well, you know, maybe my self-doubt is right. I'm not as experienced. I don't know what I'm doing yet. It is to push you back from stepping out of line, from owning your value in a way that is actually congruent with who you are. And so I want you to think about that today. And remember that moving away from the mop, moving away from the invisible things that we do is actually what you need to do for your business. Now, what's one of the biggest categories where you find yourself instead of working on your business and putting yourself out there, 
what's one of the biggest ways that we can actually distract ourselves for hours a day, for days a week, that we can actually throw ourselves in and distract ourselves with what they call this emotional or invisible labor. And I'm going to tell you, and it's going to be tough because it's going to sound really bad. <laughs> but it's in family. It's in all the invisible and emotional labor that we do around our families. And we can still do when our kids are in their 20s or 30s, that we can actually use it as a distraction to throw ourselves in to all sorts of family things without setting the boundaries about the importance and the value of your dream, the importance and the value of your passion, the importance and the value of what you actually should be doing with your time to own your value and put yourself out there more. Now, does that mean that we cut our families off, right? Does that mean that we say like, hello, no, but sometimes it means, yes, yeah, setting a boundary, questioning ourselves before we automatically do the hard work that no one else is stepping up to do automatically jumping in to say well someone's going to do it and let's just get it done and i can i'm it's like i'm on sale and i'm expendable my energy my time my mental bandwidth that's expendable there's that's a victimless crime if i jump in and use all of my energy to do this when there's other people who aren't actually stepping up because they really haven't been asked nor do they really need to. And things become more equitable when we start setting boundaries, asking questions, using our voice and questioning things. So here's a really good example. Because for us women, it's such, our families are such a big deal, right? Whether it's elder care, or we have grandchildren who want to be watched, or we have adult children who still need to be rescued from things, is to say, I am going to jump in this time if I am, and let's talk about a plan for who's on the list next time. And now I'm going to make sure I educate everybody and say, hey, uh, mom and dad had this fall and I was the one to be there for them this time. So someone needs to be on call and step up the next time. That's an example of doing what you need to do, but owning your value, putting a boundary around your time because it's not less visible than anybody in your life who's driving to work for their day job, your career, your passion, what you want to do is not less important. So, you know, my big tips for today are around evaluating yourself for where you're doing. Um, sometimes we call it busy work. Sometimes it's invisible labor or emotional labor where we're jumping in without thinking um, and doing all of that kind of work. Secondly, it's where do you go inside? If I even challenge you to say, I want you to start owning your value, stop proving yourself and just start showing up as you even if you're new and not that experienced in your new career, which is pretty much every coach I've ever coached over the past 10 years, 90% of them are brand new in their coaching career, right? And um, the third one is how can you start to set boundaries and use your voice in a way that tells everybody in your life, I'm actually really serious about this passion, about the work that I want to do. Even if it's just your personal growth and you don't have a career yet, the way that you can use your voice and self-advocate around my time and my energy is actually really important. Because although there is on the one scale of seventh chakra, there is infinite possibility, there is also more levels of reality. And there is a level of reality at first chakra where actually time is very limited and time is fixed and your energy is not unlimited, right? On one end, you're an eternal soul and unlimited powerful being. On the other end of the scale at the first chakra level, you have a limitation of your body and of your energy and of your mental and emotional bandwidth in any given day, in any given week. And if you want your dream, if you want your passion to work, if you're sick of saying how much more time is going by, then you have to start putting limits on what is draining that time, what is draining that time. You know, I can't, thank you, Jennifer, for that. For that. Oh, she said, great insights. I can't tell you the number of people I've coached over the past decade who really just said, I want this strategy, I want this strategy, show me how to make video to really explode online. And as we get into this, the coaching sessions, the thing that is stopping them from marketing themselves, never mind video anyway, is that they actually have no energy left by the time it gets to the 
by the time it actually comes down to the small amount of time in the week or bandwidth that they could actually plan a video, never mind make a video. So those are my three big tips for you. Think about where you unconsciously pick up the mop instead of saying, I'm freaking valuable. And secondly, start to use your voice to challenge where you have just automatically jumped in before. I'm doing this all the time. I have a daughter in college. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm working on it all the time. I'm conscious. And I have two stepdaughters who are in, who are in grammar school and middle school. I'm having to think about this all the time for my own career, because believe it or not, I am also a week out from my three day alive event and I'm still driving children to school and making lunches and preparing dinners. I have all of that same emotional labor that I have to set boundaries and have balance around too. And so it's a work in progress, but we have to be conscious about it. And thirdly, keep in mind, where is your inner critic taking you out? Believe it or not, the solution to all of these things starts on the inside. And so we are almost full at Ignite, probably too late to book a flight, maybe not for you. I booked a flight this close in, to an event. But if you are local, anywhere where you can drive to Massachusetts, I would urge you to get your ticket give us a call, get registered and come to Ignite for these three days. We start next week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday for that total inner transformation so that you can start to own your power and your value in a bigger way. Because if this is what's stopping you, which it is for most of us when we're being honest, until we solve this problem, it nothing that we really want to do or get done, do or be in the future is going to work out the way we want it to. And being honest, if it hasn't so far, this is the time to do the inner work and clear this out. Believe me, I've been studying this for over a decade. I know it inside and out, and we will transform you in those three days. You will step up on stage at the end of the event with me and declare your power in such a radiant, sparkly way that feels so congruent to you that you will walk out a different person. And people in your life will be like, WTF, what happened to you? And you're just going to be loving that feeling. You're just going to be owning it. I can't wait to see you there. Well, this is Margaret for our Monday Empowerment Show today. Missing Bethany, but she'll be back with me next week, the week of our live event. And we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.